Secret. The inside story of the U.S. Minuteman 3 missile's midnight launch U.S. Minuteman 3 vs. China's Dongfeng 31 Why did the U.S. military test fire a missile at night? Why is the Minuteman 3 so unreliable? Hey everyone, military buffs. It's your old military enthusiast here, the guy who's super sensitive to any military news and digs deep for the inside scoop at the slightest hint of activity. Recently, I've dug up some explosive news that I absolutely have to share with you all. In the early hours of May 21, local time, the night sky over Vandenberg Space Force Base in the U.S. was suddenly torn apart by an eerie flash of light, the U.S. military stealthily test-fired a Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missile. This test was deliberately conducted in the dead of night, and even residents in the 5-kilometer radius around the base were strictly restricted from entering. The secrecy level was practically top secret. You need to know that this is no ordinary military development. As the core pillar of the nuclear triad, intercontinental ballistic missiles, with their intercontinental strike capability and strategic nuclear deterrence, have always been the most significant pieces on the chessboard of great power competition. Each test firing is like dropping a boulder into the lake of the international situation, and the ripples inevitably cause geopolitical tremors and subtle shifts in the strategic balance. The star of this test, the Minuteman III, can be called an evergreen tree in the history of weaponry. Since its official entry into service in 1970, it has lived through the tense US-Soviet Cold War, witnessed the fall of the Berlin Wall and the historical upheaval of the Soviet Union's dissolution, and for more than half a century, it has consistently served as the backbone of the US land-based nuclear forces. Even today, the Minuteman III maintains the unique status of being the world's only currently serving land-based multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle MIRV, intercontinental ballistic missile, it can carry three independently guided nuclear warheads, with a circular error probable CEP, of less than 185 meters, and a theoretical range exceeding 13,000 kilometers, enough to cover any strategic target on Earth. What's even more worthy of in-depth analysis is the timeline behind this test. Just two weeks before the launch, the U.S. State Department high-profilely announced the resumption of negotiations on the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces INF, treaty, a crucial arms control agreement that had previously lapsed due to mutual accusations of violations between the U.S. and Russia, suddenly returning to the international spotlight. At such a juncture, the U.S. military's choice to conduct a Minuteman III test firing in the dead of night, is it purely a technical verification, or a carefully orchestrated strategic signal? Is it a deterrent to potential adversaries, or a means to increase leverage at the negotiating table? Behind these questions may lie deeper strategic considerations. Next, let's cut through the fog and peel back the layers to explore the real intention behind this midnight launch. Before we delve deeper into this test, we first need to understand that the Minuteman III holds a pivotal position in the U.S. nuclear deterrence system, it's the core of the land-based nuclear force within the U.S. nuclear triad. But who would have thought that this seemingly formidable fellow has been plagued with problems in recent years? Next, let's have a good chat about the little-known issues behind the Minuteman III, see why the U.S. military both loves and has a headache over it, and also see where it stands compared to similar weapons in other countries and what impact it has on the global strategic balance. First, let's talk about the Minuteman 3S test success rate, which is simply a bit tragic. Several tests in 2018, 2021, and 2023 ended in failure, with two of them even requiring the activation of the self-destruct sequence. Just thinking about it is embarrassing. Take the 2018 test, for example, shortly after launch, the first stage malfunctioned, resulting in complete destruction in mid-air. That's like stumbling and falling flat on your face right at the starting line, so humiliating. Then there was the November 1, 2023 test, a spot check launch experiment conducted at Vandenberg Air Force Base at noon. As a result, this Minuteman 3 failed in the first active stage, deviated from its planned trajectory, and ultimately had to be self-destructed. Such a failure rate, if it happened in other countries, would probably be laughed at by the international community. But the US, relying on its global fan base, has stubbornly endured. However, this also reflects some potential problems within the US military industrial complex. It's hard to imagine that a strategic weapon would have such low reliability. Then look at the test in February of this year. The US military claimed it was successful, but strangely, no substantive results were announced. And this test on May 21, 
although they announced a flight distance of about 6,759 kilometers and claimed it hit the target, the outside world widely suspects that it was likely another failure. Otherwise, why would they conduct another test so soon? It's like a student who didn't do well on an exam immediately asking the teacher for a retake. Wouldn't that make people suspect the validity of the first result? From this, we can also see that the US military is actually unsure about the performance of the Minuteman 3. They urgently need to prove through repeated tests that this missile can still hold its own, but the results are always unsatisfactory. Speaking of this, we have to compare the Minuteman 3 with China's Dongfeng 31. Once you compare them, the gap becomes obvious. China's Dongfeng 31 adopts a mobile launch mode, which means it can move flexibly and covertly across vast territories. Imagine a transporter erector launcher, TEL, carrying a Dongfeng 31, like a mysterious ghost shuttling through mountains and roads. It's almost impossible for the enemy to find it. Let alone intercepting it, they might not even know where it was launched from. On the other hand, the Minuteman 3 uses silo-based launch. All fixed silos are closely watched by enemy satellites during wartime, becoming key surveillance targets. As long as there are any pre-launch preparations in the silo, such as equipment debugging or fuel loading, they are likely to be detected by satellites, and the opponent may very well launch a preemptive decapitation strike. Moreover, because the launch points are fixed, it's easier for the enemy to lock onto and intercept them. From this perspective, the Dongfeng 31's survivability and deterrent power in wartime are significantly stronger than that of the Minuteman 3. Now, some people might ask, since mobile launch has so many advantages, why doesn't the United States adopt this method? Actually, the reason is simple, the technical difficulty is too high. Don't be fooled by the US constantly flexing its muscles in the field of technology, it also encounters bottlenecks in certain key technologies. Take missile mobile launch technology, for example, it's not something that can be easily overcome. Moreover, the technology of the Minuteman 3 is already outdated, and the US military is well aware of this, so they have long planned to replace it with the more advanced Sentinel missile. However, the ideal is plump, but the reality is skinny. The US's industrial and technological capabilities are no longer what they used to be, and the development path of the Sentinel missile can be described as full of setbacks. After investing $100 billion, the delivery time has been repeatedly delayed. It was previously said to be delayed until 2030, but recently, according to Guangming.com, senior US military officials announced that the Minuteman 3 will be extended in service until 2050. What does that even mean? By then, controlled nuclear fusion might have already been achieved, and the US military will still be using Grandpa's generation of missiles. It's unbelievable to even think about it. This also reflects the US's dilemma in the development of new weapons, on the one hand, problems with old weapons are continuous, and on the other hand, new weapons are repeatedly delayed. This awkward situation of having nothing to follow up with is not good news for the US military strategy. Looking across the ocean, Russia demonstrates unique strategic wisdom in the field of land-based ballistic missiles. Take the Yars Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, for example. This national strategic asset, known as RS-24 by NATO, adopts an advanced solid fuel propulsion system and an inertial guidance plus GLONASS satellite navigation composite guidance method. Its road mobile launcher can achieve rapid deployment in complex terrain environments. Coupled with multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle MIRV, technology, it can theoretically launch a saturation attack on 6 to 10 targets simultaneously. Russia inherited the missile technology legacy of the Soviet era, and with the continuous efforts of veteran military industrial enterprises such as the OMSK Transmash Design Bureau, it has developed a new composite material missile body and anti-jamming communication system, making the penetration success rate of the YARS nearly 30% higher than its predecessors. Different from the US's research and development approach of pursuing technological extremes, Russia pays more attention to the lifecycle cost control of weapon systems. The YARS missile adopts a modular design concept, with strong commonality of key components. Daily maintenance only requires simple vehicle-mounted testing equipment, and the annual maintenance cost of a single missile is only one-fifth of that of the Minuteman 3. This pragmatic approach has been verified in the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the Russian strategic missile forces can maintain a nuclear force readiness rate of over 80% under conventional operational pressure. In contrast, 
The US Minuteman 3 modernization project, launched in 2017, has invested over $12 billion, but the test success rate has fallen to a historical low due to technical bottlenecks in the new guidance system, highlighting the waste of resources and the decline in combat effectiveness caused by excessively pursuing cutting-edge technology. In Europe, Although there isn't a powerful intercontinental ballistic missile force like the United States, Russia, and China, some countries are actively participating in the construction of missile defense systems. For example, NATO, by integrating the resources of its member states, has established a relatively complete missile defense system. This system aims to counter missile threats from external sources, particularly those from the direction of Russia. To some extent, this has also had a certain impact on the global strategic balance. The United States, as the leader of NATO, has further consolidated its military influence in Europe by promoting the construction of missile defense systems. However, this has also aroused strong dissatisfaction from Russia, which believes that this is a squeeze on its strategic space by the United States, exacerbating regional tensions. Returning to China, China has always attached great importance to national defense construction. When faced with the threat of nuclear strikes, Chinese scientists have built a strong protection system. No matter how the enemy's means of attack develop, China has the confidence and ability to protect national security. Moreover, China's protective measures are not singular but a comprehensive, multi-layered system. From early warning systems to anti-missile interception systems, to the formulation of various defense strategies, China is constantly improving and developing. Through unremitting efforts, Chinese scientists have placed China at the forefront of the world in the field of nuclear protection. At the same time, while developing its defensive capabilities, China also focuses on the construction of its own nuclear forces, maintaining a certain strategic deterrent to ensure national peace and stability. Alright, that's all for today's sharing about the US military's Minuteman 3 missile test and related military topics. If you're interested in military affairs and want to know more exciting content, don't forget to follow me. See you next time. Bye-bye.